Dahil gusto kong gugulin ang buhay ko nakasama si Kristo. Para tumugon sa tawa. Dahil gusto kong maging pare. I want to become a missionary. Kasi gusto kong maranasan ang buhay seminaryo. I just want to answer my what ifs. Dahil nais kong paglingkuran ng Diyos. Para maging isang misyonero. Dahil hindi pa yapa ang puso ko pag malayo kay Kristo. Para mapalapit sa ating Panginoon. To respond to the initial call to become a priest. Ito na ang pangarap ko mula nung bata pa ako. Gaya nila! Dahil interesado ako. Para sa aking pangarap. Para maging body missionary. I want to attend the needs of other people and to become a missionary one day because I want to follow Christ. I answered the Lord's call and I respond to a call, a call of love. To serve God and His people. Para maging daluyan ng pagmamahal ng Panginoon. Para sa mission. Kasi walang matematik sa seminary. Because I want to experience the vocation jam 4. Upang ipagpatuloy ang mission na ibinigay ni Kristo. Dahil gusto kong maranasan ang buhay seminaryo. Dahil gusto kong magmahal at lumago. Because I want to try the road less traveled by. Para maging mabuting tao. Dahil gusto kong magsilbi sa tao bilang isang pare. Upang makapaglingkod sa Diyos at kapwa. Dahil pinili kong sumunod. Para pasukin ang buhay religyoso. To know how I can surpass my limits. Dahil gusto kong magsuot ng sultani. To answer God's call. To know more about priesthood. To make myself better. Para tumubo sa tawag ni Kristo. Because I am called by Jesus. Dahil gusto kong maging banal. Para tumaba ang vokasyon. Para maging fit. Fit for Christ. Dahil gusto kong makita ang sarili ko. Para maging masaya. To know if Christo life is for me. Dahil sa pag-ibig ni Kristo. To be formed holistically. Tinahanap ko ang aking sarili. Dahil una niya akong minahal. I want to nurture my vocation. To help other people and to spread the word of God. Pumasok ako sa seminaryo. Dahil alam ko, ang tunay na kayamanan at pag-ibig na walang hanggan ay tanging kay Kristo lamang matatag upang maging misyonero at maging tulay ng mga nawawala ng pag-asa sa buhay. Because I want to explore the world with Christ. Dahil gusto kong malibot ang mundo bilang misyonero. Pumasok ako ng seminaryo upang maglingkod sa bayan at sa Diyos. Magandang nabi po sa inyong lahat, Padre Louis from Salam SVD, and uh, I'm greeting you from Christ the King Mission Seminary here in Irodriguez, Quezon City in the Philippines. We are close to the end of the Lenten season. This coming Sunday is already Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. And Palm Sunday, as we know, is the beginning of the Holy Week. We still have time to, to reflect. We still have time to pray, to, re, to keep silent, to have a quick date with the Lord. What is the meaning of Lent? Lent is a solemn religious observance in the Christian liturgical calendar. Lent is an intensely penitential time because we are motivated to examine our relationship with God to look into our consciences, admit our sinful nature, and respond to the call of God to return to Him after being rebellious against God. It is a time for a more intense encounter with God. It is like a homecoming as we return to God after living a sinful life. Lent can also remind us that our life on earth is borrowed. Our life is Lent. We do not own our life. We are all mortals. And the possession of mortals is also mortal. Tonight, for the next 30 or 45 minutes, we will listen to the sharing and the testimonies of three or four of our SBD missionaries working in the foreign missions. These SBD missionaries started their journey 
to the priesthood at Christ the King. They were once upon a time students at Christ the King. From Christ the King, they went to Mindoro, they went to Tagaytay, where they finished their studies in theology, they got ordained, they have been assigned to different places as professors, as missionaries, as uh, from different apostolates. One of them is working and assigned in our seminary at Epworth in Iowa in the United States where he's teaching. The other is a missionary to Hungary in Europe. Still the other is a missionary to South Africa and still another is a missionary to Timor-Leste in Indonesia. We would like to share with you these missionaries, SPD missionaries, because you are helping our seminarians at Christ the King. Someday, these seminarians at Christ the King will also become like these missionaries. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your, for your assistance, for your help, for your words of encouragement. We hope that your Lent will be meaningful, will be grace-filled, will be quiet. Some people are asking me, Father, where are you going to spend the Holy Week? I think the best place to go to during the Holy Week is not in Hong Kong or Boracay or Boron or Balisin or Bohol or Cebu. The best place to go during the Holy Week is go to your conscience, go to your heart and meet your God in your heart. Happy Easter in advance to all of you. Marami pong salamat. Enjoy this very short online Lenten recollection with our SBD missionaries. Thank you and good night. Good day, my dear brothers and sisters. I am a father, J. DeLeon SVD, and I'm so happy for this opportunity, for the invitation of Father Louis to share with you about the topic Lent and Mission. You know, if you say the word Lent, it actually means a lot of things. But for sure, uh, it's about the 40 days journey towards Holy Week that lead to the Paschal Mystery and the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord. When we say 40 days, they have a lot of meaning. Uh, of course, one uh, main reflection is about the 40 days of Jesus in the desert where he was tempted by the evil one. Therefore, in these 40 days of Lent, we're actually journeying with Jesus during his temptation in the desert. And we all know what happened. There were three temptations. You know, The first temptation is the, the pride of life. You know, When he was asked, to be on top of the, the pinnacle and then the evil tempted you 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 go down and the, the angels will protect you. There is a temptation in what we call the last of the flesh. 
This is when the evil one tempted Jesus to turn the ordinary rock to become bread. And we all know, of course, the last one is that he wants Jesus to worship him. And this is what we call uh, the, the last of the eyes. My dear brothers and sisters, we are access. That's why in this three temptation, the church acknowledged the three pillars of Lent. Against the lust of the flesh, we are called to deeper fasting. Uh, for against the, the, the lust of the pride of life, we are called for prayer. And for the, for the lust of, of, the, of the eyes, we are called to do more almsgiving. Therefore, in my reflection for today, in terms of mission, both prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, they are all necessary. That's why we try to highlight them during this Lenten season, but they are much needed all throughout the year, especially in our mission. So first, let's go to pra prayer. Why prayer, the one of the pillars of land, is very important in mission? Because in prayer, we recognize that we cannot do it alone, that we have a God, that we are not self-sufficient. Like Jesus, we always go to, we need to go to the Father and be intimate with Him in order for us to, to do our mission. You know, I mentioned that I'm a missionary to, to South Africa. And the one thing that I realized when I arrived there is that, you know, there's a temptation that we are bringer of the good news, therefore we are, we are giving Christ to them. But, but even Christ himself acknowledges that we, we need to continue not to be like a giver of the, of the good news, but we are also receiver of the good news. If we are missionaries and we want, and this mission is not ours, it's the mission of God, we need to always pray because we need to be in touch with, with God Himself. What is His will in this mission? And one thing is for sure that even before we go to a mission area, God was already there. That's why we're always reminded, you know, if it's your first time in a mission area, you have to kiss the soil because the divine is already present there. You have to remove your sandals because you are not bringing the divine there, but the divine was already there. You are saying to me, but Father, this mission related is only applicable to you because you are a missionary. But my dear brothers and sisters, by virtue of our baptism, we are all missionaries. You know, sometimes we also have the tendency to think that if I'm a missionary, if I do something, if I share the good news, even if you are ordained, non-ordained, or you are a lay people, there's a tendency also to become proud. I am better than you, that's why I'm giving the good news to you. But this is not true. One of the most important realization that I had when I arrived in South Africa was this, that indeed I saw God's presence in the lives of the South Africans. Maybe you have heard the word Ubuntu, Ubuntu is actually a philosophy. It's a Zulu word, which means it highlighted in the phrase, I am, therefore we are. It is, very, it is actually a very Christian, Christian philosophy because we acknowledge the importance of others, the familiar relationship. If you look at the Trinity as a community, this is very much related to the Ubuntu philosophy. Therefore, you can say that even before the whole country was Christianized, the native people already know that Ubuntu, and it's divine. Therefore, you cannot say that, hey, I'm, I'm, going to be, I, I'm going to South Africa in order to give Christ to them, when in fact, Christ is already living with them. Our role is only to allow them to realize where is God in their day-to-day -day living. One, stories that I, one of the stories that I cannot, I cannot really forget was that it was my first time to say a mass in one of the villages and I have to pass by an elderly woman because he does, she does not have transport to go to church and she was really walking, she was sick so she was, she was walking in a, in a cane state but immediately after the mass she told me Father, we are going to visit one of the sick she himself was sick but she was willing to visit another sick person because of the principle that I am part of the bigger humanity, a selfless act of service. 
That's why here we can see that indeed, even before they were Christianized, again, God was already with them. So as missionaries, we are not superior because we can also receive the good news from the people. Therefore, we are acknowledging that we cannot do this without God and we are acknowledging God in the people. How can we better acknowledge this? Through prayer. Because God will remind us that, hey, look at the people whom you are serving. I am with them. Now let's move on to fasting as one of the pillars of Lent, a product of uh, the a product of the reflection and temptation of Jesus. Fasting is like, of course, we, we know fasting, like fasting from food, but it can it can actually pertain to a lot of different things. Something that is good, and you are not choosing it for a better purpose. In reflecting on this, I remember my vocation story also. You know, as you can see, uh, I'm actually a uh, six-year, a uh, five-year, almost six years as a priest, and I entered the seminary late vocation already. I worked in Japan for six years and in the corporate industry for 11 years. I was supposedly a seminarian after my high school graduation, but I did not choose to. Why? Because I was thinking of the worldly things. No, no, bata ako pag tinatanong ako, anong gusto mo pag laki mo? Parati kong sinasabi, gusto kong maging pari. Because napapalibutan ako ng mga mga pari na, nag, na masayang nagliligot sa simbahan or mga madre tapos attracted ako dun sa puting suot nila. Pero nung elementary ako, nalaman ko na yung value ng money. Sabi ko ay, wala silang pera. Ayoko nang magpare. Gusto ko nang maging isang computer engineer because I want to discover something to help the world. And indeed, I took up computer engineering uh, in college. And after that, I had a very good job. But in spite of the 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 praise of the people, yung mataas na malaking malaking salary, a beautiful girlfriend, I felt that I'm not at peace. There's something missing in me. It's because I am not doing the will of God. Because I know from the very beginning that in spite of the luxury that I experienced in Japan, my heart is actually called for mission, for foreign missions, specifically for Africa. And lo and behold, nung pagdating ko doon, I felt so at home. Kahit the first time kong pumunta sa South Africa. Difficult struggles, giving up of many things. But if you are obeying the will of God, if you are fasting and giving up, something good for the better because it's the will of God, then you can experience true joy. Kaya mga kapatid, you know, in our reflection for fasting, hindi lang ito tuwing Lent. We have to think of something that we can give up, not only because it is good, but because it is the will of God. And lastly, I would like to, well, well, in, in, in a fasting also, I would like to share with you what happened, you know, in South Africa, because this is my missionary situation. Maybe you have heard about Nelson Mandela. For so many years, South Africa uh, was having this law called apartheid, separate ang mga puti at mga itim. Why? Because the white people, the white, some, not all, but some white South Africans thought that they are, they are, their white supremacy, they are superior than the, the black people. Therefore, they are only one who can be doctors or engineers. And the black people can only be, like, for example, uh, work in, in agriculture and in the forest. There's a lot. Even in the Catholic Church and in the Protestant churches, there's a church for black people in, the, in one town, and there's a church for white people. We all know that this is anti-gospel, but because of the feeling that we are superior than you, then we cannot worship alone, even in the beach or in the restaurants. There is a great discrimination. Why? It is because of the feeling that they are superior. And this pride, we are asked by God to fast. I hope that this fasting will only happen not during Lent. Kung ano man yung mga feeling natin na sobra tayong angat kesa sa iba, at mas magaling tayo kesa sa iba, let us remember that we, we need to fast from this pride in order to really fulfill the will of God. And lastly, about Am's giving. Am's giving is giving something that is important to us, to other people. Of course, the typical Am's giving is giving help for the poor, but it, this is not only the, the, the intention of Am's giving. If we give something na meron tayo, na 
essential part ng ating sarili, pero dahil ang ating existence is not only for ourselves, not even for our family, but for others, therefore we are willing to give this something that we have. No? Kaya, if you are giving something for the church or para sa pagpapalago ng, ng, ng simbahan, then you are doing also something. You are giving something selflessly to the work of the Lord. Kaya I'm so happy that I heard from Father Louis that our audience are actually the one who's supporting our, our seminarians and the work of the seminary. So this is something that is good. You are actually doing a very, very good thing. And, you know, with this, with this uh, I, I would like to clear also some things with almsgiving because sometimes other people are saying, Eh, ba, Father, money is the root of all evil? Actually, St. Paul did not say that. St. Paul said that the love of money is the root of all evil. In the parable of the talent, whatever was given to you, you are asked to, 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 to make it grow. Kailangan mong i-invest para ito ay lumago kasi biyaya na binigay sa iyo ni God. Kaya kahit sa pera, hindi natin sinasabi na pera is evil because paano tayo makapagpapatayo ng, ng mga pabahay para sa mga mahihirap? Paano tayo mag, magkakaroon ng feeding program, magbabayad ng electricity sa church to buy the beautiful beautiful uh, images of our Lord and the Blessed Mother here? We need money. But on the right intention. Therefore, God is saying, palaguin mo. Pero ang pagpapalago mo ay hindi para sa sarili mo at hindi lamang para sa pamilya mo. Pinapalago mo ito because you want whatever you have, talents, time, and treasure for the work of the Lord, of the Lord for the needy, and for the mission, for the evangelization of peoples. So my dear brothers and sisters, we really thank, I allow me to thank you for this opportunity, you know, to affirm you also that your help is actually is actually a form of selflessness. You are giving something that you have, importantly, for the work of Christ. So Lenten season, again, from the pillars of Lent, from the reflection of the temptations of Jesus, we got prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, which is actually also a very good job, a good work, even in the Old Testament from the Jewish people. And in the Christian tradition, we continue to learn this. And from these three pillars of Lent, this is also very important and mission. Therefore, prayer, fasting, and absgiving is not only to be done during Lent, but all throughout the years. Therefore, my dear commissionaries, our dear partners in mission, continue to pray for us as we pray for you. Thank you so much for listening, and may God bless you in your joy in this Lenten season. Amen. Warm greetings, everyone. This is Father Elmer Hernandez, SVD. I'm originally from Oriental Mindoro and currently serving now in Hungary. Alam niyo po, once I was here in Christ the King, a collegian, I entered Christ the King after my high school days. And um, I had great memories here in Christ the King back then. And when the time came that the provincial of Hungary asked for help in our mission in Hungary, I decided to say yes to that call to serve the Hungarian church. But prior to that, when I was a collegian here in Christ the King, it was very interesting that um, I saw an American father, Father Stanley Plutz. And during our classes, I would always see him from time to time from the window during our classes. He would clean the garden, the monument of our Polish martyrs. And that very moment, I said to myself, I will stay here in Christ the King. My life would be here. Just because of that moment when I saw Father Stanley, and um, my days in Christ the King perhaps were the preparation for my future mission in Hungary. And for us as missionaries, it's very important that when you leave your own country, you don't leave with grudges. You leave with joy so that when you go to the mission, 
you will have to share the same joy and not the grudges that you carry along along yourself and um in po marami akong alaala na babalikan dito at malaki ang utang na loob ko sa mga kaparian natin na inabutan ko dito sa panahong iyon who showed us really what it meant to be an SVD missionary when you are ready to go where you are sent well during those days when we say philosophy here in Christ the King our concern was not about the mission first it's about our studies a preparation for our future ministry and um, indeed nagawa talaga ng ating mga kaparian the necessary preparation for us before we go and I remember in my 15 years in Hungary now as a missionary um, looking back I would always see to it na yung, during my vacation I would spend minimum 50% minimum 50% of my time looking for my SDD brothers and yeah spend the time with them and since um, I am in Hungary and come I come home only once in three years I don't send news about myself um, during that span of time so when I come home for vacation we really sit down together to share how my life was in the mission ko ano na ding nangyari sa kanila dito ano yung mga nagbago and really I, I enjoy every moment when when I come home and I would say that Christ the King is a home to me a home to me where I can always see my brothers my formators um, years back na naandi dito kahit na medyo umilanda din sila and then there was a time nakita ko nasa VCR na din sila but I always look back with gratitude kasi nga sabi nga natin kung kung saan ka nang galing don't forget that yun din lagi yung babalikan natin even our family when when we leave our homeland it's always our loved ones na babalik-balikan natin and um, sa kada bakasyon ko dito na iginugugol lagi ako madaling maraming baon pagbalik ko sa mission and one of them is when i see our seminarians the young generation of our seminarians um, i see in them the elder 20 years back here in Christ the King na sila na yung bata na susunod and i'm so happy that we still have young ones who are ready to answer God's call and um, to be there for them, to assure them that life is beyond Christ the King, that life is more than Christ the King. This is just a place where they will be prepared. At ito yung isa sa malaking um, pasimula para sa nagaantay sa atin na mission when we are sent out after our ordination. And in this um, season of Lent, one of the very important things that we are called to is to make sacrifices. And like in my case, kahit hindi ko isipin na malaking sakripisyo ang iwanan ng sarili kong bansa and leave my own family. But in a way, it is a sacrifice. And I remember when I left Christ the King, when I left my, my province, when I I said goodbye to my loved ones, I have to admit, I really cried. Because I knew it that I will come home only once in three years. At mas iniyakan ko yung actually yung mga lolo at lola ko. Kasi hindi ko alam if they will still be alive when I come back. And it was a very human experience that you, ne you needed to cry during that time. And, you know, after that, things became easier through the years. And God prepared me for everything. Hindi ko maisip na 
walang mangyayari talaga in the span of the first three years. And it's really God's blessing kasi wala. Walang nangyaring hindi ko inaasahan. When I came home, my grandparents, they were still alive. The second time around again, they were still alive. And slowly, na-prepare ako doon ni Lord for that uh, moment in my life when they will be gone. And perhaps um, in your case also, um, during this Lenten season, um, I encourage you to make sacrifices also and that sacrifice will not be in vain because the sacrifice that you offer for our mission for our seminarians it will not be in vain because every little help that you extend to our seminarians during this time ito yung mag, mag, magbubunga ng malaki that will be an investment for the mission and now that um, we are on the occasion still, perhaps we can say, in the celebration of 500 years of Christianity in, in the Philippines, really, it is about time to give back. We are gifted to give. I remember when, when I heard a song, the theme song of the anniversary of 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, I cried a lot. And I was in the parish, the first parish where I served. And I really felt that it was a moment that we are about to give back to the mission. And nobody would imagine at this very moment that Europe now is a mission territory. Nobody would imagine that. And decades back, we had, for example, in Hungary, um, we had plenty of missionaries, and five of them came to the Philippines to serve as SVD missionaries. Five of them, and they spent almost all their lives here, just that our superiors from the general aid asked them to go back to Hungary to revive our mission after the fall of communism. And seeing the great works of our missionaries, especially in Mindoro, in the island of Mindoro, at this very moment in my 15 years in the mission, I think I cannot be proud of anything yet. I'm still in the beginning of giving back um, to the mission. At the very moment, um, I am teaching in the school, um, and I'm, I'm really grateful for this opportunity. I never imagined that it will come in my life that I will be teaching the kids. And the very sad fact of that is, Hungary, generally Europe, is a mission territory. And as a teacher, I have to begin teaching the very foundation of Christian faith. May isip niyo po ba na even the kids, they do not know how to do the sign of the cross. I teach uh, from nursery until grade eight and they don't know. They don't even know the prayer, Our Father and Hail Mary. And now, in my third year as a priest serving in Hungary, it took me three months for the kids to memorize Hail Mary and Our Father. And this is very sad, but at the same time, it is an honor. Can you imagine an honor to teach the kids and they will be the next generation to teach the following one. By the time that they will be grown up, I might be going for my retirement. And I hope it will be the legacy that I'm um, leaving the local Hungarian church, that the kids would tell the next generation that it was Father who taught us how to pray. It's a very significant experience because I didn't think that there was Knowing that Europe was the basin of Christianity, and now we, we can say Europe now is very pagan in that sense, when they do not know how to pray. And so we need missionaries, we need young ones um, in Europe. But of course, 
uh, this is to remind also our young ones that um, going to Europe is not as we think because the real battle is different. You have to, to work hard, you have to clean, you have to cook, you have to wash your clothes, you have to iron your clothes because the life of our missionaries is different from what we have in the Philippines. But anyway, this is the, the spirit of Lent, um, making sacrifices. And during this season, when we are in pain, always be reminded of the cross because the cross reminds us of the pain that Christ went through. Sabi nga ni Father Titus when I was in the novitiate, I would not forget that. When you are in pain, pwede ka namang magsabi sa Diyos because Christ has been there. Pinagdaanan niya yun at nararamdaman niya. So, lagi lang nating tatandaan when we have pains and we need to go through plenty of sacrifices, lagi nating kasama ang Diyos, especially during this season. At lahat ng mga sacrifices natin, hindi masasayang. We can offer those sacrifices for the sufferings. Sabi nga nung dentist ko, um, when I went to the dentist, nung may mga uh, gagawin sa ngipin ko, from time to time sabi nung dentist, hindi kita bibigyan ng, ano, ng pangpangimay. And I asked why? Because kakayanin mo yung sakit, I can imagine. And that pain, you can offer to those who are suffering because they are persecuted because of their faith. So, on yung panghihinayangan, um, our seminarians now, they are our gifts to the mission of the church in the whole world. Especially, not, especially now, in Hungary, we are really in need of missionaries, young missionaries, young, dedicated, joyful missionaries to work in the kingdom of God. And let's give back because indeed we are gifted to give. God bless you.
all of you and welcome to our online uh, recollection. I'm Father J. Francis Flandes, uh, Divine Word Missionary. Ako po ay assigned sa uh, Hong Kong, China. And my present uh, apostolate ministry is with the Filipino migrants, no? chaplain to the Filipino migrants. No? And uh, As a chaplain, chaplain, I talagang I accompany them, I journey with them. No? And that's why I try my best. No? Hindi ko makagawa ng program pag hindi ako maki-journey sa kanila. O baka gagawa ko ng program, baka ako lang yung gusto ko pala yun, hindi pala gusto ng iba. So, I try to, to listen. No? So, listening is important. No? And that's a way to abandon yung gusto ko. Dahil ang gusto natin na gawin, ang kalooban ng Ama. No? Ganun din pala, pag tumutulong tayo, hindi mo lang gusto mo. Dahil ito yung kalooban ng Ama. Okay? So, I'm sure, I'm so grateful and happy na marami ding sumunod no, sa Panginoon, journeying with us. Yung aming mga benefactors, thank you for your generosity, not only just your support, but also your prayers. No? Importante, prayer. So, part of me as a missionary is yung leaving yung comfort zone. No? Yung, umali, yung when I was, uh, when I, I, my first assignment, no? uh, doon sa Hong Kong, talagang yung culture shock. No? And yung nandun ako, parang gusto ko nang umuwi. <laughs> no? Lahat doon, hindi ko alam. No? Uh, language, culture, yung pagkain, pero later on, masarap ng pagkain. <laughs> but the point is yung nawala, umalis ka sa comfort zone mo, dila ka doon in an unknown culture or people. But, at the beginning, may resistance, no? parang ayaw. Pero nakita ko in the end, sometimes ganun din pala yung buhay natin as Christians. No? Sometimes the Lord wants us to leave our comfort zone para makapasok tayo in God's zone. No? Pag nag-God's zone ka na, tayo, mas mapakinggan natin anong gusto ni Lord sa buhay natin. And as Christian as baptized, ganun din yung buhay natin. No? Na sometimes pala, hindi lang iniisip ang sarili natin. Sometimes we want our own way, not God's ways. No? Diba? The Lord's Prayer, Your kingdom come, your will be done. So a prayer meaning God's will be done. Okay. So, our, our mission as Christian is doing the will of God. And how can we do the will of God? Not only individually, but as a community, okay? as a church. Okay? We, we as missionaries, we try to spread the word of God, bringing the good news to our brothers and sisters, sharing the word of God, inspiring people like this uh, online recollection. But we cannot do it without also your support. Okay? Sabi nga, in Chinese may kasabihan, Money is not everything, but without money, we can do nothing. Okay? So we need also your support. We need also your prayers. No? Dahil ang mission natin, hindi lang mission ng SBD, hindi lang ang mission ng simbahan. Mission natin lahat to. Ikaw bilang binyagan, bahagi ng simbahan. You participate the mission. So your prayers, your support is the contribution for the mission of the church. Somehow, you abandon no, your comfort zone. You abandon yung gusto mo lang and you share it no, to, the, to the church. And that is, that is a real giving. No? Ang pagbibigay na hindi lang gusto mo but merong sacrifice. There is no real worship without sacrifice. That's why the Holy Mass, it is called the Holy Sacrifice, no? Holy Eucharist, there is sacrifice. Inaalay ni Jesus ang kanyang buhay. That's why ito yung pinakapik ng ating celebration, yung Holy Week, yung pagmamahal ng Diyos ipinakita sa krus. Sacrifice, ang kanyang pagmamahal, it is a sacrifice. That's why I believe kung ang pag, lahat ng pagmamahal 
kung may sakripisyo, may forever. Pag walang sakripisyo, isang linggong pag-ibig. No? So, that's why yung ating commitment sa Kanya, commitment natin sa mission, yung support natin sa mission, dapat sacrifice lang yan. Okay? Sabi nga, di ba, pag sacrifice, we worship the Lord. There is no real worship pag walang sacrifice. That's why there is a sense of abandonment. No? An experience as a missionary, there is a sense of abandonment. You abandon parang to, to embrace other culture, parang we abandon no? yung Filipino culture to embrace another culture. Ganun din sa binyag. That's why yung binyaga natin, yung ating first death, we abandon being worldly dahil gusto natin to embrace the spiritual, the kingdom of God. Tanda natin, yung worldly, physical, temporal, ang spiritual, that is eternal. And that is why we embrace what is eternal. No? Spiritual. Palaguin natin yung spiritual. But how can we nurture our spirituality kung tayo-tayo lang? That's why we as Divine Word missionaries, let us journey together. No? Journey together, let us nourish our spirituality as one church. No? That we try to share our SBD spirituality no? sa inyo. No? Yun ang, because you support us, sinasamahan nyo kami, sasamahan din namin kayo in our, in our spiritual journey. Okay? So, there is a sense no, of a community. No? Sa community, sense also of abandonment. No? Na, natutunan ko sa seminaryo when I was here, marunong dapat tayo to abandon the self. Kasi pag community life, pag sa seminaryo, pag dinadala palagi mo yung sarili mo, Sometimes, ang sarili, ang dahilan, division in the community. Dapat handa tayo i-abandon ang sarili natin at i-embrace natin si Kristo, ang spirituality. Yun ang purpose. Dahil pag ang sarili mo, daladala mo, nakalimutan mo na ang purpose pala natin. No? As donors, as benefactors, is not only just to give, but to embrace spirituality, to embrace Jesus. No? So that is a challenge for us. No? Na pag sumunod pala tayo sa Kanya, if we abandon ourselves, if we deny ourselves, dapat si Kristo na ang sarili natin. Hindi na ang personal. No? Hindi na yung sarili natin, but si Kristo na yung ating sarili. That we become now an extension of Christ. And so, in this, uh, uh, as we prepare no, for the Holy Week, Sana we learn first to give worship to the Lord. How to give worship? Sacrifice. No? That is the, the expression of love sa Panginoon. Sacrifice. There is no real love kung walang sacrifice. At kayo, you sacrifice, yung support nyo, yung tolong nyo, that is a great sacrifice. Okay. Second, abandonment. No? And missionary, we do not, of course, we do not abandon yung kultura, but first, kailangan kunting limutin muna bago matanggap yung other culture. Ganon din, pag sumunod tayo kay Lord, sometimes limutin muna yung sarili para tanggapin natin si Kristo. If we do not surrender ourselves to the Lord, walang pagbabago. It is only in surrendering ourselves to the Lord na merong transformation. That's why prayer, it is a form of surrendering. The more you pray, the more you surrender, the more we will be transformed. God's will be done. A beautiful model for that, Mary, behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Yung sinurender niya, ang buhay niya, miracle of all miracles nangyari. The Word was made flesh because she surrendered everything. Ganun din. That's why in this uh, land, this Holy Week, our call is surrendering. Yung buhay natin, not only just you surrender part of your resources, no? but try to surrender also yung buhay natin kay Lord. Pag nag-sinurrender natin, we become missionaries. Ang missionary pala, nagsusurrender ng buhay. At si Lord na ang kanilang buhay. 
So, as uh, partners in the mission, I thank the Lord no, na maganda pala may kasama sa pagmimisyon yung kayo. No? Kung wala kayo, kung kami-kami lang, parang mahirapan din kami. We need people like you to pray, to support us. We have also our times of you know, loneliness, times of uh, failures or difficulties. And parang aside from prayer, sometimes people send good, generous people, kayo, to inspire us. Alala ko yung joke, sabi nga yung isang bata, nagdadasal, no? Lord, bigyan mo ko ng tinapay, Lord. Bigyan mo ng pera, Lord. Maski sampung piso lang, Lord. E yung pulis sa likod, nakarinig. Mabait na pulis. E nakapikit yung bata. Kumuha yung pulis. Lord, maski sampung piso, Lord. Kuha ng pulis ng 20. Niligay sa harap. Pagdilat ng bata, Lord, thank you, Lord. No? No? Uh, yung thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. No? Yung hiningi ko sa'yo, Lord, 20. No, bakit 10 lang to Lord? Next time, Lord, wag mong ipadaan sa police, Lord. <laughs> eh, joke lang yan. But the point here, sometimes, tayo ang sagot. When we pray, God will send people, generous people like you, to continue the mission. Okay. God use you for the mission, God's kingdom. Yung mission namin, mission ng simbahan, mission ng sa atin, bilang binyagan. So, yung support nyo, that is uh, an act of generosity, an act of you know, selfless act. You know? Generosity, a love of God, no? in the context no? sa pagtulong ng aming mga younger brothers, yung aming seminarians. Uh, pray for them, tulungan natin sila, and I'm sure they are also praying for you. Okay? Yun ang they are praying for you. Mas maganda nga, we journey. Ang simbahan, we journey together. ba? Ngayon, the universal church, pero tayong the synod, the, synod, the synodal church. No? Ang simbahan, journeying together. Hindi lang missionary. So ito yung maganda. Yung participation nyo, yung support nyo, we become one church. We journey together. At alam naman natin, yung ating destination is in the kingdom of God. Walang makapunta doon na mag-isa. We go there as a body of Christ. So we journey together and thank you. No? Continue to support us. Continue to support our seminarians. Inspire. No? Encourage your friends. No? Let us journey together towards the kingdom of God. Amen. A blessed day to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Father Paul Aquino, SVD. I am currently assigned in our Chicago province in the United States of America. Right now, I work as a formator for our college seminarians. And at the same time, I also teach music. So, instructor po ako ng music doon sa Iowa. Because they have, uh, in their curriculum, they have uh, music classes. So, that's why I'm working there as an instructor of music as well. Um, I entered the SVD in 1991 and I was also a student of Christ the King Mission Seminary from 93 to 1995. I finished my philosophy in 95 and the following year I went to Tagaytay para po doon yung aking postulancy. But eventually, ako po ay lumabas kasi akala ko ay wala na. Uh, even lumabas po ako noon, ay nagpapasalamat ako noon sa aking mga benefactors because they really sent me to school. Um, after high school, my parents couldn't afford to send me anymore to school. So that's why they told me, no, you can't go to school at least for a year. But then, because of many generous people, I was able to continue without stopping my education and eventually, of course, entering the, or joining the seminary as an SVD. Uh, for so many years, for like about 14 years, I was out of the SVD and finally God called me back again to try one more time to be a missionary, in particular to be a Divine Word missionary. So that's why I went to the United States and do my novitiate and theology and eventually got ordained a priest in 2016 in the Archdiocese of Chicago. And after that, of course, they also chose me to work at our college seminary in Epworth, Iowa. 
I am so happy and actually honored to do this, a little reflection for all of you, invite, uh, with the invitation of Father Louis Ponsalan. So talagang hindi ko naman in-expect kasi nakabakasyon po ako ngayon. Uh, kaya po ako nakita yata ni Father Louis, so in-invite po niya akong magbigyan ng content reflection, at least something for us to think about as we continue on with our Lenten journey. I would like to start with this biblical passage that always comes to mind, for me at least, every time we are in the season of Lent. Uh, this is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. So if you're going to ask me really, ano nga ba talaga ga, dapat natin gawin sa, sa Lent na ito? Of course, uh, the, the, always, ang, le, ang theme ng ating Lent is prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. But for me, it's always more of the discipleship. Of course, kasama ng tatlong yun, and how we could be disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. But then, especially this season of Lent, we have to deny ourselves and take up our crosses and follow our Lord Jesus Christ. Hindi pa ako madalas or yeah, makabalita sa Pilipinas. Usually nakikita ko lang naman sa, sa Facebook kung minsan at saka sa social media and YouTube and all that. So there's always like a, a new language that I have to get used to. And, and before coming back to the Philippines, natawa lang ako sabi ko, ano ba itong mga lahat na lang ay mari, mari, mari. And of course probably the, the most that I know is what we call marites. And so a lot of people are now Marites. And of course, the, the very first time that I heard this, I said, Ano nga ba yung Marites na yan? So, yun pala, Mare, ano ba ang latest? And then, Mare, may rapayatang Mare Sol, and all the Mare, Mare, and all that. So, in our Lenten journey, first, our Lord Jesus Christ told us to deny ourselves. Yes, it's really true na ang sarap nga namang of course, especially for all of us Filipinos who are always in a community. We are always in a group of people and we really like to talk and discuss about among ourselves. And one of the things that talaga, ah, sarap, sarap talagang pakinggan is pagkwentohan na lang yung ibang tao. Kaya naman lahat na lang ng tao dito ay nagiging marites. Probably, yeah, there are so many ways for us to deny ourselves. And probably this Lenten season, as we approach the celebration of the Paschal, the Passion, Paschal Mystery, the Passion, Death, and the Resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, what are the things? Ano nga ba yung mga bagay-bagay na pwede natin sabihin, yes, I am denying myself of this so I can follow our Lord? Yeah, probably instead of, you know, gossiping or pagkwekwentuhan natin yung mga kapitbahay natin, yung mga friends natin na wala sa ating tabi, why don't we deny ourselves? Meaning, why don't we stop doing so? So let us look for so many things that are actually denying ourselves. In a way, these are what we call also dying to ourselves. That there are so many things that we would like to do na hindi naman siya karapat dapat para sa matawag tayong disciple or follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, there's also another, the second thing our Lord Jesus Christ told us is to take up our crosses. I know, okay, uh, every time um, na nandun ako sa America, may mga uh, uh, so many show, show of faith ng mga tao. Like, uh, recently I've been, you know, been hearing about this. Uh, when, you ha when you pray, you really have to claim it, okay? So when people pray, they say, I claim it and it's mine. And I believe that it, this is more of a, a, a faith, a show of faith of our non-Catholic sisters and brothers. Kasi talaga namang pag sila nag-pray, talagang, yes, mapapasa akin to. Or probably even saying, uh, I, Lord, I pray for uh, that I win the lotto. I pray, I claim it, and it's mine. Well, sometimes... Uh, this is what we call the prosperity gospel, when, er, wherein lahat na lang ay dapat blessing, blessing, and all that. And pag nagkaroon tayo ng konting suffering, sinasabi natin, maybe God is not blessing me. Maybe God is punishing me and all that. But we have to be reminded that today, in this Lenten season, that even the Son of God the Father really suffered. And it's part of our daily life. And as really, as disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, we do have to take our own crosses. 
Sabi ko nga sa iba, lo, uh, ang dami na daw nila mga sufferings and all that. Well, sabi ko, if you see that you are carrying a cross, I believe that it's one sure indication that you are becoming a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kasi kung wala tayong cross, wala rin naman eh. So, um, there is value in suffering. Not because nagsasuffer tayo, hindi na siya blessing. It actually, uh, it's actually the hardships, all the tribulations in life na, ay, ang dami-dami kong pinapasan. These are actually things that would fortify our, fortify our faith to really follow our Lord Jesus Christ. So, to connect this with, with missions, sabi nila, oh, kay, kay, Father, kayo po yung missionary kasi kayo mga pinapadala abroad or mission and all that. Yes, all of us are supposed to do mission, to participate in this mission. Hindi lang po kami, kundi kayo din. Kasi iniisip siguro ninyo, how can I participate in the mission kung nandito lang naman ako? The mission is to spread uh, the news that we have a God and that we have a loving God. Hindi naman siguro kailangan talagang lumayo pa tayo sa ibang lugar o pumunta sa ibang lugar para lang magawa ito. Because I believe that mission is not only where we go, but mission is actually also what we do. So how have you been spreading God's love with your family members, with your relatives, with your friends, your co-workers? That is mission, right? So let us all take part actively in participating in this mission of spreading that there is God and there is this God who loves us. And though we have to deny ourselves and carry our cross, these are sure indications that we are disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know it's not easy, but as I have quoted in the Bible, there's also one thing that our Lord Jesus Christ told us. Even in our all the blessings, all the happiness, and all our hardships, God, our Lord Jesus Christ, will always be with us. And so, my, as my closing statement, or as my closing to this short reflection, I would like you to join me in singing this song at, entitled, I Am Ever With You, to remind us that we will always have our Lord Jesus Christ in happiness, in health, or in sickness, or in sufferings. Have a blessed Paschal Triduum.
Now, kindly join me in praying for our mission around the globe, praying for our young seminarians who are preparing for the mission that our congregation will, will be sending them. Um, and I will be praying in Hungarian, our Father, and Hail Mary, Mi Atyánk, Aki a Mennyek Ben Vagy, Szentel Tessék Meg a Neved, Jöjjön el a te országod, legyen meg a te akaratod, a mint a mennyben, úgy a földön is. Minden napi kenyerünket add meg nekünk ma, és bocsásd meg vitkeinket, miképpen mi is megbocsájtunk az ellenünk vitkezőknek. És ne vigy minket kísértésbe, de szabadíts meg a gonosztól. Üdvözl légy Mária, kegyelemel teljes, az Úr van te veled, Áldott vagy te az asszonyok között, és áldott a te méhednek gyümölcse Jézus. Asszonyi Szűz Mária, Istennek szent anyja, imádkozzál életünk bűnösökért, most és halálunk óráján. Amen. Sziváni Mária, morancíva vagy se kvembu, hosszí én a vena, okat is híville, se karika vagy vasszati, okat is híville ne jesszó, mvána vagy vena. Maria, lowa tlawa leka, mana wa shikwembu, o ikungilele hina vadyo hi sueswi, nile ingarini wa kofakahina. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Az Úr legyen veletek. Ágyon is Úr ízen meg benneteket a mindenható Isten, az Atya, a Fiú és a Szent Lélek. Amen.
Thank you. 